Hello there, YouTube. It's Jordan Ray here again with another Google Apps Scripting video. I wanted to uh, take a few moments to update my Clasp video. Uh, when Clasp was first released at the beginning of this year, I made a uh, quick little video to kind of uh, look at some of the cool features that it had. Now that it's been, you know, we're almost at a year into class, but it's been updated a number of times. Maybe some of the things in that video aren't as relevant as they were. So I thought I would demo some of that and more specifically how to kind of get some external node dependencies working with class. One of the commenters mentioned they're wanting to use Pug with it. Now I don't use Pug very often. Pug used to be known as Jade. Uh, however, it's totally possible to get it working and to kind of build a very streamlined process. So here is my uh, project I have open in VS Code. Real simple, empty directory. Uh, and we're going to just kind of build from there. The first thing I'm going to do is clasp create. And I'm just going to call it clasp demo. And we're going to put it in a spreadsheet that I've already created. So I'm going to just copy this key. Come over here, paste that in. And I'm going to set the root, ah, can't type, root directory to be, uh, we'll call it dist. Go ahead and hit enter. All right, once that finishes, you'll have a couple of the required files for your class project in here. Uh, you'll see the class.json, and that's telling where the root directory is and the actual script ID. And that's at the root of your project. And then in the distribution folder, you've got appscript.json, and that is just your manifest file. I'm going to initialize a project in order to get that package.json file so that we can start installing some dependencies. So I'm going to npm edit with the tack y on there. And now we've got a package.json over here. So let's start installing some dependencies. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is npm install, and we're going to add the, uh, let's type it out, save, oops, save dev, and we're going to add at types Google Apps Script. What this will do is this will give us some type definitions for uh, code completion as we code. Once that finishes installing, you'll have your types all set up there. And in the package.json, I want you to delete the test scripts that you have in there. And we're going to add in a push command. And what this is going to do is we're going to say class push. Very basic, one of the, probably the, the command you'll use the most with class. And with that, we can actually start maybe developing What's a few of the files that we're going to use. Now, Clasp is capable of using TypeScript now. And to use that, all we need to do in our dist folder, let's create a new file, and I'm just going to call it code.ts. And VS Code already picks up that I am going to be using TypeScript here. Gives me that cool little blue icon. Um, you don't need the icon, it doesn't do anything other than indicate the kind of file you're working with. TypeScript is great because you can really, you can still type basic JavaScript. Um, I'm going to do function, uh, hello world. And let's, and here you can already see the power of the, um, the uh, autocomplete coming in here. I haven't ha I didn't have to import anything. I didn't do anything at all other than just uh, install the package. Um, I'm going to up the text size there a little bit. Ah, perfect. Okay. Um, hope you can see that a little bit better. Okay, cool. So I, I didn't have to do anything other than just install the package over here. And VS Code knows that, hey, guess what? Probably using this package. This guy installed it. It's in its package.json. Uh, you can see the dependency in there. Um, that's all we need to uh, to get going there. Now it's not perfect. The um, 
type definitions are not totally complete. You'll have to look at the uh, documentation on GitHub to see what all is covered in there. If it's most things, I think, except for advanced services, but little things like um, logger, uh, logger.log is in there. And we'll say, uh, hello world. We're going to save that. And I'm going to type class uh, push. Oh, sorry, I added the script. So I'm going to run. Uh, sorry, I'm having a stroke right now. npm run push. And that's going to grab our little class uh, push that we had. And there we go. Now we can actually open this just with class open. And that'll pop open a browser tab with our code in there. Now, it does look a little bit different than it usually would um, if we were to just use the editor in the browser. That's no problem. These are things that uh, are going to be necessary when you start splitting your code into different files uh, and using TypeScript more extensively. Uh, but we can still, of course, run this in the browser and get that, you know, hello world logged to the console, right? Super basic, uh, super basic example. Okay, so I deleted everything. I'm going to create my do get function. It's going to take in that E parameter. And what we want to do is return. Yeah, let's just return HTML service from file. I'm going to call that file. Oops. Um, let's just call it index. And let's set title to be uh, class demo. I want to create a source. And inside here, I'm going to create index.pug. All right, it even has an icon for uh, pug files here. But basically, you know, pug allows us to type simple little things like p hello world, and this will compile into a p tag and uh, in, in an HTML file, right? So I need a couple of packages in order to do that. Right now, it um, isn't compiling into anything. It's just sitting there as a pug file. So let me come back over to my terminal window. I'm going to npm install uh, save dev. Uh, let's install pug and pug CLI. Uh, pug is the package that will, um, you know, interpret our .pug files, and the CLI is going to allow us to uh, compile right from the command line and to actually put it into a script that we can run um, you know, as part of our build process. Now, there are add-ons for things like Webpack and uh, Gulp. If you use either of those build tools, um, the thing I love about Clasp is that it is not opinionated at all. It doesn't require you, that you use Webpack or you use Gulp or you use Grunt or um, tools like that. Um, I prefer Webpack personally, but this video, I'm not going to go into any of that stuff. Once Pug finishes installing, um, we can come back into our package.json and I'm going to add a develop, uh, develop script. And what this is going to run is pug, we're going to grab the src directory. We want to output everything from that directory into dist. And one other flag I'm going to add is the w flag, and that means it will watch changes in that file. So let me save that. I'm going to come back over to my terminal. I'm going to npm run develop. And immediately pop up an index.html over here. Now, that p tag has become an actual HTML p tag. Um, it's basically taken this and created this. Now, we can make changes to the PUG file. Maybe I will, um, I'll wrap everything in a div and I'll just call it container. I'm going to indent that in uh, because the way pug works is it works off of indentations like this. I'll add another uh, p tag that says uh, this is a bunch of text. And I'm going to change this to an h1. 
And so let's save that. And immediately we've got an HTML file under here. Now, let me stop the development process. I'm going to npm run uh, push. Come back over to the project window. I'm going to refresh things here. And we should see those uh, new files. And there we go. We've got our do get in here. We've got an HTML file here with that compiled HTML. Now, before I end this video, uh, I'm going to just do one other thing here. And I'm going to come back over to my PG file. Um, because VS Code comes built in with Emmet, we can do things like uh, just put in an exclamation point, tab it, and it will give us the whole outline for a uh, responsive um, HTML template, tab through things, and then inside the body, I can add a container, and there's my H1, and this was a demo. Let's save that, come back over to my terminal, I'm going to Oh, I didn't actually NPM run develop. Now we could actually put it, uh, a lot of different build commands in here, or like I said earlier, use grunt or gulp or webpack to do those things. Uh, but right now, eh, no need. Run and then push. And let's send it up to the cloud. And I'm going to run clasp deploy. And that should actually deploy the class project so that we can open it. Created version one. All right, no problem there. Now when I look to publish and deploy as a web app, I already have my project version. Um, oh, but it doesn't actually link me to, oh, that's weird. It doesn't link me to a test version, but that's okay. Let's just fire it up and see what we have here. Class demo, and this was a demo. All right, great. Um, so I hope that shows you a little bit of what is possible with uh, Clasp and maybe how to set it up for a more usable uh, build process. Um, if you're interested in things like Webpack or Gulp, um, please you know like, comment uh, below and let me know those things that you're interested in. And I definitely look forward to seeing projects that are built with this in the future. Cheers.